Mr. Speaker, in 2024, one would have anticipated that we would have come to this Parliament with a simple amendment to the Pensions Act that would excite members with lucid, intense, passionate substance because of the nature of this amendment. But when I sit here and listen to the contribution coming from the member for Miku South, tongue in cheek saying that he supports it, and quickly taking off at a tangent to attempt to attack the administration on every imaginable thing which comes to his mind, as usual. To make it appear that this government doesn't have the people at heart. Mr. Speaker, the gentleman said, why now? But he spent five and a half years in government and never saw the need, never saw the need to increase the pension, the, 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 the pensioners. Despite begging, <laughs> Despite I begging him. Even if I begged, he would not have listened. Because that's the nature of the gentleman. But Mr. Speaker, to stand here and to listen to all of the lies which he propagated here this morning. And why do I sit and listen to a man who, in a court judgment, was classified as a stranger to the truth? Why should I sit and listen? Why should I listen to a gentleman, Mr. Speaker, who, in a court judgment, Mr. Speaker. was classified as Mr. a stranger Mr. to the truth? Uh, member for Castries North, there is an intervention by the member from Eco South. Mr. Speaker, um, on a point of order, the member is misleading the House. There is actually no um, court uh, statement that ever makes that statement. And I'd like to admit it. I'm very serious. I want the member to withdraw it because it's an inaccurate statement. There has what never is, been. What's the statement? Sorry, he said that there was a court case in which the, the, the judge said I was a stranger to the truth. That's never said that. He never said it was you. He never said it was you. Okay, Mr. I'm glad I'm clarified that it's not me that he's making reference to the Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Member of Castries North, please proceed. Mr. Speaker. Who the cap fits, <coughs> let them wear it. I said I will not stand or sit in this parliament and listen to anyone, anyone whatsoever, who in a court judgment was referred to as a stranger to the truth. So Mr. Speaker, so we come here and all of a sudden, Mr. Speaker, all of a sudden, they seem to be the champions of the poor. They seem to be the champions of the poor. Mr. Speaker, during the period 2016 to 2021, when they held the reins of power, prices in this country were spiraling, unmatched, never made a statement, never defended the poor people never came in here to say, let us get the supermarkets. And they were in control of the supermarkets. Never saw the need, Mr. Speaker, to say to the supermarket, at least look in the mirror, and say to yourself, prices are too high, and therefore we need to bring it down. But you come here today, you came here today, and you want to know why now? Why now is because you failed to do it for five and a half years. You failed to do it in the third year of this government, a government for the people, the people's government. In the third year, we have found reason to introduce this because we are saying no pensioner 
should earn less than $725. $725. You spent five and a half years, and if you could have taken more, you would have taken more. During the period of, of, of COVID-19, Mr. Speaker, before the announcement of COVID-19, the intention was to rid public officers of their salaries. I was appointed to meet with the public officers and said, we'll have to cut them off, cut off their salaries. Mm. Huh? Even without any analysis being done, yeah. even without any analysis, even without understanding the magnitude of COVID, the intention was to deny public officers their salaries. And we saw what happened. We saw what happened. There's over $300 million of loans spending here and spending there. And then you speak of secrets. You speak of secrets. Yeah, the Mali Pwete, that was another one. And you speak of secrets, and you instruct an official to write a check of seven million U.S. dollars, wasn't it? EC dollars. A check of seven million EC dollars, like it's seven dollars. A check of seven dollars. You're writing seven point three. For vaccines, you had no evidence existed. Didn't come to Parliament to discuss it. Didn't have the audacity to say, let me discuss it among our people. Seven million dollars. And gave it to a gentleman that you say, well, I thought he was the manager of the company. I didn't know who he was. When you knew who he was. You have dealt with him on numerous occasions. But you take the poor people's money and land it in his hand and for this prime minister now to be fighting to get it back. And you claim to be concerned and caring about the poor people of this country. I remember this gentleman, Mr. Speaker, in Babono. In Babono, Mr. Speaker, at a council meeting. Coming into the council meeting and sitting next to me and saying how someone asked him for $5. And he didn't realize it was so bad that people, you know, were begging. All of a sudden, Mr. Speaker, he found out, he found out that people were in need. Because he's not accustomed to that. He's not accustomed to that, so he's talking about it and had to say no. This is an everyday thing. Go in the graveyard, go Grass Street, go Bwapatat, and go in those areas and you'll understand the plight of the people. Don't come here today pretending, you know. Don't come pretending. You're an imposter. Yes. Mr. Speaker, we must come here and debate with honesty and sincerity. We must come here to fight the cause that needs assistance. Not for your wants, because you want to get back into power. You want to sit on the chair over there, so you, can say, you would say anything. But let me say this, Mr. Speaker. Men must realize, whatever you say in opposition, you must be prepared to say it and defend it or do it in government. So you'll do anything. You'll damage the entire country. You'll spread propaganda. I mean, I saw a clip last evening where the very gentleman who was in the back of the truck, very gentleman who was in the back of the truck, heading to the group, saying how, showing the stadium, I'll send, I'll send it to you. You'll understand. You know, because, you know, you know th those individuals, they do anything to gain sympathy. Let me sit in the back of a truck. Even if it's heading to Deglu, I will sit there because people will have some sympathy for me and say, oh my God, look at him, eh? Let me take it away right now. 
The gentleman, Mr. Speaker, is talking about how we are not ready, etc., etc. Mr. Speaker, you should have seen the stadium last night. You should have seen, seen the stadium. On television, it's immaculate. In reality, it is immaculate. And he has the audacity to return here today and talk about how we were not ready. But you see, this is not the quality of men we need inside there, Mr. Speaker. We need genuine, well-intentioned individuals who have a heart and soul for the people. And that is what this bill is about, Mr. Speaker. That is what it is about, this amendment today. It is at the heart and soul. You know, of course, the word of war came up here this morning. The word of war came up. And of course, advisors will advise. Well, you know, it's a war against corruption. It's a war against wrongdoing. But all of the wrongdoings you engaged in when you're in government, taking away the National Trust's subvent subvention just because they didn't support an, in an intention of yours. The distress fund, taking it away and lying to the people and saying it is still there, it is in the consolidated fund. In the consolidated fund. There was an established distress fund. You took it away and trying to fool people, trying to fool people. And today, you speak about war. Can you imagine this? You know, Mr. Speaker, war comes about over money and land. But some wars come over rhetoric, the things you say. So just imagine your prime minister goes to the United Nations and he's addressing a matter of concern. And he says, we will open war on them. Just imagine, at the United Nations. You think you'll tell the United Nations that's not what you mean? <laughs> that was not your intention? Mr. Speaker, and one person's mentioned this thing about FAR 15. And you know, we must stop attempting to fool people, eh? Some of us are not farmers, but we have our little backyard gardens. We can plant our little lettuce <laughs> and cucumber our, our music and a pigeon peas here. You understand what I mean? Go marshal, you see. And if you go marshal, if you go um, cedars, you'll see some nice green lettuce. But we don't go and abuse the system. Go to communications and works and demand that they give you an FAR that you're not entitled to. Because you don't even have a square foot of land in agriculture. But you abuse the system as prime minister and ask them to give you an FAR to try and fool farmers and the people to say, I am a farmer too. He did not apply. Because he's the boss. He's in charge. He's in charge. So he instructs, he instructs his sidekick at the time. Get me an FAR 15. But Mr. Speaker, we need to mention those things. Because when those imposters come inside of here and try to make people believe that they are saints, that they're defenders of the poor, they're champions of the poor, that they'll die for the poor. We must let the people know that these men cannot be trusted because they are strangers to the truth. <laughs> Nothing. And, and it is painful because in 2024, and it happened in 2016, when an individual believed that he can fool the people of this country, it is a shame. But Mr. Speaker, what we have come here today is more than this sort of behavior. This behavior that we have seen over the last few years, unacceptable behavior, Mr. Speaker. 
must be drowned in the goodwill of this government. It must be drowned in the goodwill of this government. Because this amendment, Mr. Speaker, of the Pensions Act, the amendment to the Pensions Act, Mr. Speaker, is intended to do, as I said, an oversight in the legislation. An oversight which for many years, decades, no one has seen the need, no one saw the need to come to this great parliament and to ask members to support an increase in the pension. Mr. Speaker, pension is a serious thing. And many people in this country, I believe the most painful thing about pension, Mr. Speaker, is that there are many people in our countries, particularly the small countries, small islands, who work all their lives, all their lives. And in the intention is, the time will come when I shall earn a pension. There are some of them who really start in productive activity, meaning financial and otherwise, and having the financial discipline and management to be able to have a savings. Some of them start very late. So by the time the year of pension comes, they would have engaged in mortgages, etc., etc., because some of us are not as, as fortunate as others who can be engaged in some activities over the seas to be able to generate their wealth. I never sold ships to insurance companies. But Mr. Speaker, when you don't have, when you don't have such avenues, deceitful avenues, to create your wealth, Mr. Speaker, you're called upon to manage your affairs. Sacrifices, many of us here on this side went through those. The sacrifices we made, the challenges we faced, the adversity, and the ability to, to decide priorities and to make the savings. Some, by the time they really get serious into life and the pension age comes upon them, they suddenly realize, suddenly realize that I've got a mortgage payment to make every month of $2,500, but because I am retiring now and I'm going on pension, my pension payment is only 1005 and so I cannot continue to pay my mortgage. And many a times, Mr. Speaker, those pensioners are called upon to find a second job to be able to survive. So for me, Mr. Speaker, while I commend the Prime Minister on this great initiative of seeing the need among me needs, and this is not just a, this is not something which just came out of the woodwork. The Prime Minister's record is punctuated with initiatives, That's right. punctuated with initiatives from day one, True. demonstrating his soul, his heart, his soul, by doing good deeds for those in need in this country. Whether it's the laptop program, whether it's school fees, whether it is in, in, um, uniforms, through equity and SSDF, the assistance, and it can go on and on, and some of you have it better than I do, and you can recite it, you know, word for word, and all of those initiatives which have been done by this Prime Minister. This here is a continuation of the good deeds of this good Prime Minister. And when you consider, based on the information that the Prime Minister presented, that there are persons in today's age, getting a pension of $300 a month and $350 and $400, it is a big deal for them today yeah. when a prime minister and a government can have so much compassion and to say, we believe you deserve better, we believe you deserve more. 
So when you blind, blind the, the spirit of this initiative, when you try to fool people with all of the nonsense you have said, and if I should refer non nonsense, I'll withdraw it, Mr. Speaker, if I should withdraw nonsense. But when you come here, tongue in cheek, and say, yeah, I support this initiative, I support but. What but? It's either you support it or you don't support it. Either you support it and you don't support it. And I want to say something, Mr. Speaker. This business of coming here and saying, I asked you a question and you didn't answer it, and, and the thing. The standing orders are quite clear. If you have questions to ask, read your standing orders and come here and present your questions. You've been there for three years. Not once you've, you've come to the parliament to, to, to pose any question to the government, whether for oral reply or written reply. You know, come on, let's be serious. Stop fooling the people. Stop fooling the people. And you want to represent yourself Present yourself in the coming election? As a party show. But it's a party show. No, Mr. Speaker. If you are serious about representing this country, come and behave like a serious man. I see you sit down today. You had to sit down. It would have come to an end. You would have to sit down. This walking business, walking up and down playing games rather than sitting in the parliament and defending the cause of the people. You know, you had to do it. So Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this is very, very, this is a very important amendment to the legislation. But what must we do, Mr. Speaker? And I know the Prime Minister that I know, in whom I'm very well pleased, I know he's already thinking down the road as to what should be done. And if I should give him a little bit of advice, and he's very good at taking advice, I would suggest that we need to ensure that pensioners are not left behind. That at the same time when public officers are getting a pay increase, pensioners should be reviewed. And if it means commending the legislation, let us do it. Let us do it. Same time of the review for public officers, pensioners must get a review too. And you said so. You said so. You know, because we must not allow the hypocrites and the drum beaters and the noise makers and the empty vessels to come and drown the spirit of this good government. We must not allow this to happen. And so, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it is with this I stand in full support of this amendment to the legislation. And therefore, I look forward to the future. I look forward to the future as the journey of this government continues a journey that is directed by a navigator who understands what it is to navigate through these times in providing and delivering the goods to the people of St. Lucia. I thank you.